In today's video, we'll guide you through constructing a macro in Swift and explore the diverse types available. Let's start describing what is a macro. A macro is a feature from Swift 5.9 that helps you to avoid writing repetitive code by generating that part of your source code at compile time. Actually, this has been used by Swift internally to create compiler directives and attributes. You can learn more about them in the video I made explaining expressions. A Swift macro will only add new code. It will never modify or delete existing code. There are two types of macros, freestanding and attached, both having their own set of roles. For freestanding macros, we have expression role that will create a piece of code that returns a value. In this case, this binary string macro is transforming an integer into a string containing its binary representation. We also have declaration role for freestanding macros. They will create one or more declaration, like preview macro, that will create a lot of boilerplate code for you for free. Next, we have attached macros. As the name suggests, they will be attached to the declaration where they will generate new code. For Swift 5.9, we have five types of roles. Attached peer, that will create a new declaration alongside the declaration it's applied to. In this example, add completion handler will create a new declaration of this async function that supports completion handlers. Attach member will create a new declaration inside the type or extension it's applied to. In this example, case detection will generate a computer property for each case to detect if an enum value is corresponding to any of the cases. Attach member attribute will add attributes to the existing declarations it's applied to. In this example, wrap stored properties will attach a variable to every property in this struct. Attach accessor will add accessors to a property. In this case, it is adding a getter and setter to save and retrieve values from a storage dictionary. Lastly, we have attached conformance to add conformances to a type or extension it's applied to. In this example, my option set macro is conforming this struct to option set protocol of type uint8, including all requirements like row values and initializers. Now that we know the types, let's create our own macro. For this demo, we will create binary string macro to transform an integer into a binary string representation. First, go to Xcode and create a new package. Then select Swift Macro. Remember that the name you are typing here is your library's name, not your macro's name yet. You will see a screen like this. Let's highlight a few things. The package dependency for this macro. Swift syntax library will be the main dependency. The package configuration to set up which OS versions should run your macro and to export your modules publicly, and the source and test folders to implement and test your macro. Now open source folder and select the subfolder with the same name you selected for your library. It's here where you will create the public declaration of your macro. Let's create binary strings by using a syntax similar to function, except that here we will use macro keyword instead of function. We will expect an int value as parameter and we will return a string with the binary representation. Now you need to assign external macro to this declaration, indicating the module name and type with reference to the struct holding the implementation. We will create it in just a moment. Lastly, let's assign the role. In this case, it will be a freestanding expression macro. Now let's jump to this folder ending with macros. It's here where the implementation of your macros will live. Create a public struct binary string macro. Since its role is expression, let's confirm it to expression macro. You will have to implement this static method containing two parameters. Node will provide the syntax of your macro used in real code. It's from here where you can get the in the value parameter to be transformed. And context will provide utilities to make your macro better. For example, diagnose and sending suggestions on Xcode in case the macro is used incorrectly. I will keep it simple for this demo, so we'll focus on node only. Lastly, we have to return an expression syntax object. Now let's implement this macro. We will get the argument int, then transforming it into binary string using this operation. And finally, wrapping the string literal into expression syntax. 
Don't forget to add a reference to your new macro to this plugin. This will recognize the macro in the code base. If we go to main, we can run this new macro right away and we can see that it is working as expected. One last thing before moving on. Remember that we are working with plain text before the actual compilation. That means we cannot infer that a variable is holding an int. If we do that right now, your macro will crash and there's no way to figure that out. If you want to learn more about this issue, please check out my conference talk when I explain this broadly and more insights you should know before diving into Swift macros. The link is in the description. Let's fix this issue drawing an error indicating that the argument is not an int literal. Xcode will show an error in the editor if you try to use a non-integer literal. Your macro is ready. Now, if you want to test it in another project, you can either submit it to your remote repo and add it as any other package. You can also add it locally and the result will be the same. Congratulations. Now you know how to create your own macros. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about macros? And if you want to take a look to a very useful macro, check out this video where I explain sample builder in action. Remember, my name is Pete and this, this is Swift and Tips. Thanks for watching and have a great day.